Have you ever had that neighbor where you finally just had to come to an agreement, you know, you leave me alone, I'll leave you alone kind of a thing? We're going to continue talking about that today in Genesis chapter 26. Hey guys and welcome back to God's Word Made Simple by Simple Servant Ministries. My name is Aaron Hawk and if this is your first time visiting with us, I just want to say welcome and thank you for joining us today. God's Word Made Simple is an online discipleship ministry dedicated to taking God's Word and making it simple. We want to help you understand God's Word, apply it to your life, and grow in your relationship with the Lord. Also, if you appreciate this ministry and content at some point, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn that bell notification to all so you don't miss any future videos. We would love to have you as part of our family. Okay, guys, so welcome back. We are going to finish out chapter 26 of Genesis. And remember last time I talked about how they were sort of at peace? Well, now we're going to have uh, them living at peace with each other. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, go back and check out the last video. In fact, you'll really need to go back to the beginning of chapter 26. So I'll go ahead and point for chapter 26. You'll see the card up there. So we're just going to go ahead and jump into 26, and remember I told you that they would end up making a covenant together just like he did with Abraham. Well, here we go in chapter 26, verses 26 to 35. So then Abimelech came to him in Gerar with his advisor Ahuzath. Again, don't worry about murdering words. I'm not going back to my original Hebrew to figure out what that is or how that's pronounced. Um, don't worry about that when you're in church or somewhere else. If you've watched any of my videos, you're like, yeah, Aaron, I got it. But if this is your first time watching the video, you need to know that. All right, so anyway, um, then Abimelech came to him from Gerar with his advisor Ahuzath and Pictol, the commander of his army. Isaac said to them, why have you come to me since you hate me and have sent me away from you? You know, and again, remember, if you've watched those previous videos, they were getting to the point where they're like, ah, oh, this guy's getting a little too powerful. We don't want him around us anymore. And there was a lot of quarreling. They kept stopping up wells. So that's a, that's a fair statement on Isaac's part. Verse 28, they said, we see plainly that the Lord has been with you. So we said, let there now be an oath between us, even between you and us. Now, this probably sounds familiar. You've probably had something like this happen in your own life, right? Somebody, uh, for whatever reason, they don't want you around. If, if you walk with God, if you walk closely in your relationship with the Lord, you are going to have times where people don't want you around just because the presence of God is with you and they don't like it. I've had that happen in personal relationships. I've had that happen in ministry where senior pastors that I served over uh, were, were pulling a saw and so on. And we see this again here where they didn't want him around because of his power in this case. And now they're going, well, yeah, we know that God's with you, so we still want peace. We just didn't want you around us, right? You'll see that happen in your own life sometimes. Don't be surprised when it happens. Uh, Jesus warned his disciples, don't be surprised when stuff like that happens as well. The passage in particular that usually comes to my mind is the foxes have holes, the birds of the air have nests, but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. And that passage kind of discusses that. So anyway, let their middle of verse 28, let there now be an oath between us, even between you and us, and let us make a covenant with you that you will do us no harm, just as we have not touched you and have done to you nothing but good. Well, that's not true. They haven't fought each other and they haven't harmed each other in the physical sense, but they kept stopping up wells and all of that. So that's not entirely true, but we're, we're going to let that one go. So I'll reread verse 29. That you will do, do us no harm, just as we have not touched you and have done to you nothing but good and have sent you away in peace. Now that part is true. It, it was get out of here, but it was a peaceful departing. Uh, you are now the blessed of the Lord. Then he made them a feast and they ate and drank. And again, this would be normal for a covenant. They, they would typically do something along these lines. You see this fairly often in the Old Testament. In the morning, they arose early and exchanged oaths. Then Isaac sent them away and they departed from him in peace. So basically, you do you, I do me, let's not harass each other. Aaron paraphrase. Verse 32, now it came about on the same day that Isaac's servants came in and told him about the well which they had dug and said to him, we have found water. 
So he called it Sheba. Therefore, the name of the city is Beersheba to this day. When Esau was 40 years old, he married Judith, the daughter of Beri, or Beri, I'm not sure, the Hittite, and Bazmeth, the daughter of Elon, the Hittite. Before we finish the last verse, remember what I have said in so many of my videos. And if you haven't caught it before, go catch my Four Secrets to Life in the Bible. Make sure you watch that series at some point if you're going to watch a number of my videos. Or even if you're not, please just go watch that. It's just a couple of videos that walk you through how to read and understand Scripture a little better. Um, but this is called Four Secrets to Life in the Bible. The card should have been up there. But remember something that you will hear me say often on this channel, especially in our Old Testament reading. Just because the Bible describes something does not mean the Bible prescribes something. In other words, just because the Bible said something happened, like in this case, we see Isaac who is already married, and we know from our Genesis series that marriage, God designed it to be between one man, one woman for life. That is the biblical definition of a marriage. Go catch my Genesis series. If you're having any questions there, I cover that in the Genesis series. So we know that that's true, and yet here's Isaac marrying other women. Just because the Bible says this is what happened doesn't mean the Bible is approving of this. You need to remember that as you read. Now, among the infinite reasons why you shouldn't marry more than one woman, the primary one being that God said not to, but among the many reasons, verse 35, and they brought grief to Isaac and Rebekah. Go figure! Marriage was designed to be between one man, one woman, for life, the end. You interject something in there, you're begging for trouble. Of course they brought grief. What were you thinking, man? Um, unfortunately, this culture, during the time period that this was written, the culture that they lived in, marrying multiple women was very common back then. Um, so again, the Bible's not saying it's right. It clearly defined marriage in Genesis and all throughout the rest of Scripture. But you see this repeated throughout the Old Testament when some of these guys are marrying multiple women. It's not saying it's okay. It's simply reporting that it happened. Okay? All right, guys. Um, short video today, I think, anyway. Um, so... Basically, they're going to live at peace. You do me, I do me, we'll, we'll go in peace, so to speak, is essentially the summary, the Aaron paraphrase summary of this section. So now, once again, we see Isaac starting to inherit that promise. So, guys, we will pick this up next week in Genesis 27. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. If you appreciate this ministry and this video, make sure and hit like, subscribe, turn that bell notification to all so you don't miss any future videos. And if you do want to support the ministry, the two best ways to do that, first off, is share this video. Put it on your social media, share it out there, email it or text it to somebody, and then, of course, if you do want to support us financially, there is a link down in the description. This is a nonprofit ministry, so all things are tax deductible. All right, guys, thank you very much, and God bless.